Joining me are Jeff Birding of the Yes Side, which is building a better Ohio, and David Pepper of the No Side, called We Are Ohio. They're ready to answer your questions on this complex issue, and the first one comes from Jay Gronke of Madeira. I've heard ads telling me to vote no on issue two to avoid losing the jobs of firefighters, police, and others. But I've done some reading, and I can't find any evidence to back those ads. In fact, it looks to me like voting yes on two may be a better way to save public safety worker jobs. Am I missing something? David, you were first. Well, what you're hearing about on no on two is the fact that, uh, that the, the basic ability of firefighters, police officers, and teachers to negotiate for certain staffing levels it is now illegal under under Senate Bill 5. So before a firefighter could say, I want to have four folks on a truck, or nurses could say, I want minimum staffing levels to keep my hospital safe, that is now out of bounds. The big job loss is coming because of the governor's budget, which slashed local government funding by millions and millions and billions of dollars. Absolutely not true. The viewer, you have it right. If you want to keep your police and firefighters on the job, you need to vote yes. The fact is, is that cities all over the country have just run out of money. We can't afford to pay the contracts of our police and fire with all the perks and the benefits that they have in it. It doesn't make them bad. We, we honor our police and fire. We want to keep them on the job. And the reason I'm supporting this is because at City Hall, it seemed like every year was a choice between raising taxes and laying off police and fire. I think those are bad choices for the taxpayers and the opportunity to uh, have a new choice is what Issue 2 provides. Thank you, gentlemen. Question two is from Anna George of Big Al's Sandwich Eatery in Clifton Heights. As a small business owner, I depend upon the support of public employees like teachers, police officers, and firefighters to keep my business going. Under Senate Bill 5 and Issue 2, public employees would be laid off and businesses across Ohio, including my own, would be hurt. Ohio has lost too many jobs already in this recession. Why don't Issue 2 supporters recognize what I already know as a business owner, that public employees are an important part of our local economy? Jeff, you have the first response to this question? Sure, they are an important part. And again, voting yes on issue two allows us to keep those police and firefighters on the job, the teachers on the job. Uh, all over Ohio, we see teachers being laid off, police and fire being laid off because the governments just don't have money. We don't have money because taxes are down, because companies are leaving Ohio because of those job losses. If we want to keep police and fire on the job, uh, we need to give local governments the tools to better manage their costs without raising taxes. Uh, and so absolutely we want to keep them, and that's why we need to vote yes. David? Yeah, the, the layoffs, again, are being prompted by a state go government budget led by John Kasich that slashed local government like no one's ever seen. We're seeing stories across the state that that's what's leading to layoffs. Uh, but your question is dead on. You know, Senate Bill 5 basically eliminates collective, go collective bargaining for our public uh, employees. And that is one other step in running down Ohio's middle class. These, are, these folks are not only the heroes of our community, they're the heart of our middle class in many of our neighborhoods. And as, as a small business person just, just asked, this will dramatically affect a lot of local economies. Now we're next going to hear from Matt Davis, the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber. The Chamber wants to create an environment where businesses can grow. In the city of Cincinnati, the general fund budget is $340 million with 83% of those costs going to labor costs. 90% of those labor costs are fixed due to government contracts and the cost of government is only increasing. How do we create an environment for businesses to grow when the only options are to raise taxes, lay off employees, or cut services? Uh, Matt, I just don't agree with your premise. I, I spent a lot of time at both, at both governments uh, reducing spending. Spending at my time at City Hall was low after the fourth year than the first year. Uh, we reduced spending dramatically at the county. There's a lot of reform we can undertake. You guys, through your work, ha have pushed for that work, and it doesn't just include, or it has never included, laying off or raising taxes. We've got to reform. We've got to ask the politicians to think more creatively. I think we can compete without running down our middle class and to, to suggest that somehow it's the police officers and the firefighters that are the reason uh, we may not be competing as well as we want to, to me, it's just a false argument. Uh, in Cincinnati, our labor costs have gone up 18% per year over the last decade. States all over the country have labor costs they can no longer afford. David and, and opponents would like to raise taxes. He said he doesn't like, the, he like the governor's cuts uh, to local government funding. Sure the fact is, is that the other option is to raise taxes. That's a bad choice and it's going to drive more businesses out of the state. That's a part of the failed status quo that has cost us dearly here in Ohio. Well, the next question then comes from Mark Monahan, who's president of Local 48 of the Cincinnati Firefighters Union. 
Throughout this process, Senator Shannon Jones, the sole sponsor of Senate Bill 5, has stated that no one will lose their collective bargaining rights if Senate Bill 5 is implemented. Looking at the bill, according to 4117.05, bargaining units that contain the rank of lieutenant and higher will cease to be appropriate bargaining units upon the effective date of this law. If that is the case, it seems to contradict what Senator Shannon Jones has been saying. Can you clarify what will happen to Local 48 and our bargaining unit upon the effective date of this law since our bargaining unit contains the rank of lieutenant and higher? Uh, collective bargaining is still allowed under issue two. Public employees still have the right to collectively bargain for their wages, their terms, uh, hours, and then conditions of employment. Uh, it is a, the fact that if you're a manager, you can't be in a union with people who you're supposed to be supervising. That happened with Diana Fry, and we saw the scandal that happened there. Uh, so there are some appropriate reforms there, but there still will be collective bargaining. And that's why every news, major newspaper in the state, Cleveland, Columbus, uh, Cincinnati, and small towns have all urged a yes vote on issue two. Yeah, Republican David. presidential candidate John Huntsman said this bill was union busting. Uh, Rick Perry said it was right to work. Bill Cunningham says it's a facade if you think it's collective bargaining. And you didn't hear Mark's question. Under this law, any union that has lieutenants, a fire union in it, is no longer allowed to exist. It needs to somehow go through a recertification process. It is under this law now an inappropriate union. So we're going to have hundreds of unions across the state having to go back to Columbus and beg to be reconstituted. So Not beg, they'll just refile it, uh, without their hun managers in hun the union. Hundreds of unions will have to go to CERB and go through a process, and we're, it, this is going to be years of process and probably litigation to sort out who gets to be a union after this law passes. And gentlemen, one final question here. Senate Bill 5 requires public employees to pay a percentage of their health care and pension costs, and many think that's only fair because many workers in the private sector are paying more for less medical coverage and their employers can't match contributions right now to the, due to the sluggish economy. Your, your thoughts? That would be David first. Uh, most employ, uh, every state employee in the state already pays 15 percent for health care and 10 percent for pension. The ads don't tell you that, but that's the fact. Uh, most public employees in the state, not just state employees, pay 15 percent and 10 percent. So this is a way to make Senate, to hide the fact that what Senate Bill 5 is really doing is getting rid of collective bargaining. As we just talked about, getting rid of certain unions. That's what it's about. And the 15 and 10 is simply a way to get people to vote for something. But the truth is, it already is happening across the state by law. Jeff? Uh, just not true, David. The fact is, is that most of the 360,000 public employees in the state work for local governments, school districts and cities and townships. On average, they pay 8.3 percent for their health insurance compared to 31 percent that workers in the private sector pay. It's only fair to ask them to pay 15 percent. And under uh, issue two, they're still getting a far better deal than the people paying taxes to give them that deal. Well, our thanks to Jeff Burding and David Pepper explaining this issue. Remember, if you're going to vote in person on Tuesday, Ohio polls open at 6.30 a.m. and close at 7.30 p.m.